so welcome. Let, let, let's let's look at how we can uh, localize the interest bits using this dummy. So first of all, for examinations, uh, you always have to introduce yourself to the patient. But before then, you should have washed your hands. That's for the medical standard, yeah, they are supposed to wash your hands. So you, after that, you introduce yourself to the patient and also explain what you are coming to do with regards to the examination. Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff. I'm here to examine your chest. May I? That meaning that you are seeking for consent. And when the patient says, no problem, you can go ahead, it means that you've gained consent. And after gaining consent, what do we do next? If the patient is in any position, let's say the patient is lying down flat, what do you do? You would then have to adjust the bed. Okay, that is by putting the patient in the cardiac position. Yeah, so how do we do that? The cardiac position here, we assume that this is the cardiac position. And what then is the cardiac position? Is what we are seeing here that when you find the bed, such that the trunk, the trunk of the patient and the bed makes an angle of 30 what? degrees. Meaning the angle between the trunk of the patient and the bed. 30 degrees. Then we say that is the what, cardiac position. Also known as a semi paralyzed position. But this one is used most often in obstetrics. Yeah? Okay. So we position the patient in the cardiac position, as you can see. For apex bit, of course, we are going to be looking at the precordium. So what do we do? We have to undress the patient up to the level of the waist. And we know that apex bit is also referred to as the point of maximal impulse and defined as the most inferior lateral point on the precordium where cardiac pulsation can be felt. So with that, once the patient has been exposed, placed in the cardiac position, if the patient is not cachectic, most patients are not cachectic, cachectic or extremely slim patient, that's the only time that you might want to inspect for visible APS bit. But aside that, we we'll have to palpate. So the patient is positioned. What do we do then? We are going to palpate with our right hand. So that is by standing at the right of the patient, we we'll palpate for the APS bit. So once we put our hand there, we are going to be having the sensation of what? Variety of intensity of the pulsation. So we would have to localize the place or the point at which it is maximum. That's why we call, we call it the point of maximal impulse. So let's assume that that point is somewhere here where the, finger, the fingers are placed. So we would have to replace the whole hand with what? Two fingers pointing to the point of what maximal impulse so that's what we are having there we can also mark it if we have a marker but we can also leave the two fingers there to connote or to what relate to that point of maximal maximal impulse then after that the next thing we are going to be doing is we would have to locate the angle of louis and the angle of louis as we can see here is also known as the stellar angle or the manipulative stellar then the question is, what is this? What is that? So with that, we will say that take the sternum to be this, we we'll take the sternum to be this. Yeah. And we know that the sternum is made up of the manubrium. We have the body, or what you call the corpus, and we have the xiphi sternum, the xiphi sternum. So what we say the sternal angle is simply the junction between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. So it means that this will become the word sternal angle. And on physical examination, how do we find this? We would have to find that by feeling for a transverse prominence because it is a transverse prominence located between the manubrium of the sternum and the body of the sternum. So on this dummy, we will assume that we have found the transverse prominence here. And the sternal angle, which is that transverse prominence, and is the junction between the body of the sternum and the manubrium, correlates to the second rib, that is the second coastal cartilage, and extends laterally into the second intercostal space. Meaning that the sternal angle can give us that anatomical 
point where a lot of structures can be found. For example, the external angle correlates to that level at which the trachea bifurcates. It correlates to that level at which the pulmonary trunk would work bifurcate as well. And it's also that point which will relate to the second intercostal space. So once we find the sternal angle, we'll extend laterally into the second intercostal space. And after finding that, we'll count down the number of intercostal spaces till we reach the point of maximal impulse, which will be the impulse bit. So we'll count down. This is three, because this is the second intercostal. If you move down into the next intercostal space, that will give us a third intercostal space. So we have three, four, five and we will correlate it. So in this case, we will say that the point of maximal impulse, which is the apex bit, is located in the feet intercostal space. But again, we will have to correlate it to the vertical lines. We have vertical lines such as what? The sternal line, the parasternal line, the midclavicular line, the anterior axillary line, the mid axillary line, and the posterior axillary line. So with that, with what we have here, you will see that the only line, vertical line that we would have to correlate it with will be what the mid clavicular line. So we'll draw the outline of the clavicular line and we'll try to find the midpoint. And we would, this is our mid clavicular point and we'll extend it down, which falls in the plane of, or in which plane the apex bit falls. So with this, we'll say that this apex bit for this patient is located in the left feet intercostal space mid clavicular line but it does not mean that that is going to be the location of the apex bit for all patients yes normally we say the apex bit is located in the left feet intercostal space mid clavicular line that is what we've got but sometimes it may be in a different word location for example if we draw our mid clavicular line and let's say our apex bit is somewhere here and we draw a mid clavicular line and it's here, then what we can do is that we can measure the horizontal distance between the mid clavicular line and the point of maximal impulse. So that horizontal distance, which is here, let's say it's one centimeters. So if we are describing, we'll say that the apex bit is located in the left feet intercostal space, one centimeters lateral to the mid clavicular line so those are the, 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 the some of the ways to describe the location of the apex bit sometimes the apex bit may be located in the right feet intercostal space mid clavicular line in cases like what dextrocardia which can be found in catagena syndrome or we can also have it in the mid acidic line Sixth intercostal space where we can describe a, we can describe the apex bit as being displaced. So depending on whether the abnormalities or not, we can have the apex bit in different locations. I hope we've gotten that. Yes. yes you are palpating for the apex bit, palpating for the apex bit, but there's no pulsation felt. You move down and lateral, no pulsation, nothing. What you can do. When you are unable to palpate the apex bit in the cardiac position is, you have to change the position of the patient. That is by putting the patient in the left lateral position and still try to palpate. In most scenarios, the initially impalpable apex bit may become more palpable. Meaning that putting the patient in the left lateral position will help and max the apparently impalpable apex bit because putting the patient in the left lateral position pushes the apex of the heart closer to the anterior chest wall. It displaces it closer to the anterior chest wall where the pulsations of the heart will be felt at the anterior chest wall. Why? Because by then, the apex of the heart will be rising in systole, hitting the anterior chest wall, transmitting the pulsation to your hand, the fingers of your hand. So that is how to unmask an apparently impalpable apex bit. Thank you.